Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It took me four weeks to read the draft legislative bill of 648 pages. Um, and if you're confident that this bill will, will last a test of time, we ought to allow this whole next week to be, read the bill, especially since the manager's amendment, which is about 946 pages, just came out an hour ago. When we breathe in, we breathe oxygen. When we breathe out, we breathe out carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is not a toxic emittent. The day I have dreaded has arrived. Why is it that the wealthy parts of our country continue to attack the lifestyles of the rural poor, as the Evansville court Courier noted? The legislation does just that. If you're going to put a price on carbon emissions now, later, or sometime in the future, those that rely on this fuel will be harmed. My Democrat colleagues should not boast about how they made the bill better. Had they stood up, there would be no bill. I guess the other item that concerns me is the man-made crisis to empower bigger government. This bill takes from all to have government redistribute to who it sees fit. Why have Republicans fought this bill? Because we believe in less government. This creates more. We believe in individual responsibility, not government dictates. We believe in lower taxes, not higher carbon taxes. And we believe in more freedom, not less, by an explosion of government intervention. Republicans have identified our real problem. Our challenge is too little energy, not too much. We want to expand the supply of the all the above approach and let the private sector compete to sell you energy at the lowest cost. Nuclear, coal, hydro, solar, wind, crude oil, renewables, coal to liquids. Low cost energy keeps us competitive in the manufacturing sector. The cap and trade scheme has been tried twice in Europe and has failed both times. The Prime Minister of Australia has just delayed his touted cap and tax program. Why would we create a trading floor ripe for big financial investors, manipulation and failure? Why would we create another financial sector that we will have to bail out? I find it unbelievable as gas prices are going up, job losses continue to mount and the economy remains slow that we would make it even more difficult for the economy to recover. Don't forget the 14,000 United Mine Workers who lost their jobs in 1992 in Illinois and the 35,000 miners who lost their jobs in Ohio the last time we did this. Let's don't go, go down that route again. I'm sorry that we're moving this bill, Mr. Chairman, and I yield back the balance of my time. 